Yeah, really shipped in well yesterday. We're excited to be here. It's Monday morning and um, came in from California yesterday. So um, looks like he traveled well and we took him out for a little light jog around the track today just to get him, you know, acclimatized a little bit. So, so far we're looking good. He's lightly raised. The big move off the turf. Talk about that and why that happened and obviously positive result. Well, you know, he um, started out on the grass because He's bred to run on both surfaces or multi-surfaces. Um, so we started him out there. We thought it'd be a little easier route to go. And um, won his first start. Then came back and had a lot of trouble in his second start and still won pretty impressive. So then we decided, you know, the time to try the big race was the Santa Anita Derby. Because if you're good enough in the Santa Anita Derby, you can go on. So he took that step very nicely and, and ran really well. So, you know, here we are. There's always been a lot of talk. This track, the dirt track here, sort of favors horses with turf pedigrees. Do you have to subscribe to that? Well, I mean, you you have some history with a couple of the Derby winners um, running on grass. I'm thinking Barbaro, and I'm thinking Animal Kingdom. Um, but I think this horse probably, you know, we, we, the thinking is he can run on any surface. That's awesome. What's what makes him so good? He's got, a, he's got a high cruising speed and he can carry it a classic distance. Um, you know, he has a, doesn't have to have the lead type, but he doesn't have to be way back type. So he can get a, get a position and sustain it for a, for a classic distance. That's what we believe. There are a lot of, it appears there's a significant amount of speed or tactical speed in this race like your horse. Does that concern you? How do you sort of reconcile that in terms of a trip? Well, well that, a lot of that will be determined, the strategy will be determined on the draw you know, where you draw in relationship with the other horses, the other horses with similar styles or different styles. So we'll see how he draws tomorrow and, and then we'll start to formulate our thoughts about what we're gonna do in the afternoon. John, how long were you thinking Derby with this horse? At what point? Um, fairly early on, you know, um, we took a little different road than, than, than everybody else, but that was, you know, it, it was actually by design and it just happened to work. So you know, a lot of times you can come up with grand plans and things don't go your way, you know, or the horse doesn't help you. But this thing, um, what we've done this year, everything has worked out really well. John, Stephanie was saying uh, you've got to train her and, and them a little bit about kind of taking things day by day and not getting too excited. Is that is that often a challenge? Oh, absolutely. Especially Derby week, you know, because, you know, so much can happen, you know, with a 20 horse field, um, you know, you need, you're going to need a good bit of luck for everything to go really well. Cause it's the only time they'll run in a field this big, you know, mm -hmm. the Preakness will be half this size or whatever. So, um, hopefully, um, we have some good fortune along the way and, and I want everybody to enjoy the week and, and have fun and, and not stress themselves out too soon. Well, you've done, you've done so much winning over the years. Where, where does this race rate for you? <laughs> I, I don't really get into that. Um, for me, you know, my, my record speaks for itself. I have, I have numbers and, and I have a lot of success. I'm very fortunate for that. Very fortunate to have some really great owners like Michael Talla and the Heronis Racing Group um, to train for. So I feel blessed. Whatever happens, happens. And, and we'll go over there on Saturday, hopefully, and, and hope for the best. You ever think about Ron and Debbie McAnally, of course, bred this horse and everything that, you know, Ron, we're thinking with his Hall of Fame training career, he probably doesn't have a derby win in him, but he might have a win in, not as a trainer, but as a breeder. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, Ronnie McAnally and Debbie McAnally, you know, they've been mainstays of California their whole life. So there was a good piece, I think it was in the forum the other day by Jay Privman on, on Ronnie and how he came out of an orphanage in Kentucky and and had this wonderful, marvelous career. And they've been, you know, had this pedigree for a long time. They raced the, the dam and the dam's dam. So it's it's great, great breeding. And, and uh, that's a great story. John, there are quite a few horses in this field that only have three or four races coming into this. Have we sort of gone over that hump of gotten to the point where trainers as a whole don't worry about that as much as they did maybe 10 years ago? I think a little bit. It changes. Everything kind of morphs into a, a new pattern. I think guys are, are always looking at more, maybe a little more spacing than they used to. 
and um, look at the timing of their horses. And it's all about an individual, individual horse, you know. I mean, my horse um, got a little behind last year. It was a COVID year, it was a difficult year. So he was ready to run at the end of Del Mar. And then, you know, I said, rather than ship him, I'll keep him two, three weeks and wait for the start of Santa Anita. So, um, you know, it's kind of on your horse, each individual horse, what they need. Talk about the decision to ride Joelle, Joelle has been uh, my main rider for many years. Um, we've won lots of trading titles together. We've run a Breeders' Cup Classic together. Um, so we, we've had great success with him. And when the op when he came open, you know, we really didn't think he was coming open because it looked like the Baffert horse was formidable in the Arkansas Derby. So, um, but when he didn't run on concert tour. Then Joel became available, and, and we want to be reunited with him for this race. And no, 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 diss on on Rispoli. He's a great rider. He won the stake for me yesterday at Santa Anita. He's terrific. This is just a special circumstances that it happened. So, you know, Rosario has already ridden the horse. He rode him the first time, um, and then there was a little some COVID things where he couldn't get back into Santa Anita you know, to maybe ride him. So he missed the rides and, um, but he'll be back on Saturday. John, do you feel like you're here with the horse to beat? I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, we think it's a good contentious year. There's a lot of, of nice horses in there. I mean, I think we're definitely in that, kind of that first group of contenders. Um, but, you know, you got to look at the, the Eclipse Award winner from last year, the Brad Cox horse, deserving favorite. And then, I think we fit fairly well in the next group from like three to five or something like that. So we're in there with a chance, that's for sure.